It's finally time, boys. You know it. I know it. Let's. We're here to talk about triple flip reset. We are back with a follow-up video, but this time aimed at those of you sitting towards the upper ranks of Rocket League. Maybe you want to get the grand shape, maybe you just want a little sneaky peek of what it's like to finally see purple in this game. Either way, I got you. Before we dive in though, I have to do the mandatory self-promo. So if you guys haven't followed my social media. Okay, so I know a certain number of people just straight up dipped on me and skipped ahead. If you stayed, I love you. And when lockdown is over, we're getting drinks. But in the meantime, Please check the description and follow my socials. I stream on Twitch, I have Twitter and stuff, I'm just trying to grow and you guys know how it is. Anyway, you guys are the loyal ones and I'll throw you straight back into the video. The first thing I want to talk to you about today are 50-50s. This mechanic is especially important at the higher ranks because it can very easily lead to a goal if you learn how to take good 50-50s. Every time you have the ball, there's a high chance you'll be challenged by an opponent. Now, normally people try to avoid being challenged by flicking the ball over someone or hitting it down the field away from themselves. But the times where you do get challenged, you're going to need to know how to take a good 50-50. Taking one solid 50-50 in midfield can very easily put your team at an advantage if the opponent gets left behind from the tackle. So, what's the easiest way to win 50-50s and how do we practice them? Well, in order to win a 50-50, you need to watch the opponent. This goes for when you're on the ball and being challenged, or challenging the ball. If you keep your eyes on the opponent leading up to the challenge, you'll be able to read their movements very easily and give yourself a much better chance of coming out of the 50-50 with the ball. The key to actually winning the 50-50 is all about mass, or more specifically, which side has more mass behind it. You see, if I'm in the direct center of the ball, and someone challenges me by hitting the left-hand side, the ball will then bounce off them, into me, and then off me towards the right. Because I had more mass behind the ball in the direction it was hit. This is the obvious way to look at it, but what if you're both center? Well in this case, you need to look at a few things. The first thing is to take note of the hitbox. If you're playing against someone with a flatter car, and the majority of your mass is behind the center of the ball, the ball will bounce over them. This is, unless of course, they jump to put their mass behind the center, so then what? Well, the first thing you should look at is trying to hit the center, and trying not to flip. While flipping gives you power, it also takes away your stability. In a dead even 50-50, you don't really want to power through someone, as they're going to be doing the same to you. You will want to be the first one on the ground to collect the ball once it ends. By not flipping and just jumping a little bit to make contact with the center, you'll land quickly and have a much easier time following up on the challenge. So, I am sure you've guessed how I suggest training this mechanic, because it's pretty much the easiest way to train a lot of solo based mechanics, 1v1s. Head into a few 1v1 matches and just focus on keeping an eye on your opponent during every 50-50. Go back and watch the replay from a bird's eye view afterwards just to see how close you were to the center of the ball and check to see if there's still some small flaws you can improve on. The next mechanic to focus on is passing. Now passing in the later ranks can be a very effective way to score some very easy goals, because more often than not, people forget that the players on their team are there to help them and not just clean up after them after they make mistakes. By using your teammates and giving them space to make some passes, you will find yourself having a much easier time on offense and being able to convert more shots into goals. The easy part about passing is the positioning. If your teammate has the ball, you want to give them space, while also being close enough to be a viable passing option if they choose to go for the pass. You can afford to be up the field from them, but it's often very hard to get a decent passing play started by going backwards, so keep that in mind when positioning yourself. Unfortunately, the tricky part about passing is how to train it. The only real way to train passing is to go into matches with a teammate and work on your passing and accuracy when under pressure in a real match. Of course you can do this in casual, but there isn't really a way that I know of to train this in free play. Something you can do in custom training is find any redirect training pack and use that as a way to train yourself to score off the pass. You won't always be the one passing the ball, and so it's important to be ready for any kind of pass that comes your way so that you can hit that finishing touch with accuracy. Next up on the list, Backboard reads. This is one of the things you seriously need to put time into the further up the ranks you go because people tend to get more comfortable in the air. Backboard reads are incredibly useful for both offense and defense. And yes, 
That does mean that part of this training is going to be double touches. I can already hear the Silver 2 players cheering now. Being comfortable in the air and more importantly, being comfortable reading the ball when it bounces are two aspects of your game that will take you incredibly far. The higher through the ranks you go, the more you realize people are not waiting around for the ball to bounce and are instead just reading the bounce, anticipating where it will go afterwards and jumping to meet that point. Whether that's from the wall or the backboard, the result once you get it down are the same. You'll be the first one to the ball. So how do we do this? Well, it is very situational obviously, but something you can do in game is going into a lot of casual matches and trying to aerial for the ball before it touches any of the walls and just trying to read it. Not only will this get you used to reading the ball and judging its speed, but will also get you used to doing so on limited boost. For an easier and much more reliable way to train, I have linked a few training packs in the description of this video that you can use. It's important to train both offensive and defensive backboard reads, but I think defensive backboard reads are a lot more difficult simply because of the way the ball is moving. But also if you get them down, you're going to be an incredibly difficult player to score against. This is something many grand champs need to work on and is still something you can see being messed up at the highest levels of the game. It's not easy to learn, but with enough time and practice, you'll get it. On offense, I recommend training backboard reads through double touches. Yes, this might be the only time I actually tell you guys to work on some sort of freestyle mechanic, but it will genuinely help you understand how to better your backboard reads and also keep the game kind of fun for you. So if you love that last one, get ready for number four, redirects. Yes, guys, it's time. Today is the day I tell you that you need to spend some time hitting banger clips in training to become an actual god on the field. The reason I think high level players should train your redirects is pretty simple. Training redirects trains multiple things at once. It covers general car control, advanced car control, which are things like angle adjustment, placement, minor movement, as well as speed in the air and efficiency when shooting. Training redirects was something I did very early on in my Rocket League career, and I'm glad I did but I didn't really get much out of it until I trained them again around champ one. At this point, I was much more comfortable in the air and understanding how to control my car in each situation. For those of you having difficulty learning your air roll movements, because I know there's a lot of you, this is the perfect way to train them. You can very easily fine tune your muscle memory to learn how to control your car with directional air roll buttons while training redirects. Once again, I have training packs linked in the description for you, but please understand that training redirects is meant to help you with general car control and not as a way to say, I'm going to stay up the field the entire game and wait for a pass from my teammate. The last mechanic I think you higher level players should train are air roll shots. So sticking to the idea of training your air roll, air roll shots can take you very far in this game. They allow you to take shots from unpredictable angles and can often catch your opponents off guard. Aerial shots are kind of easy to train. There are definitely training packs to help you, but in game, it's a little difficult to set up. I'm sure you understand what aerial shots are at this rank, but for those of you who don't, it's just the action of angling your car to one side a little bit in order to get your car behind the ball and change the direction of your shot. These can be used to make some really easy shots a little harder to save, and some of the harder shots score a little easier to hit. When training them in custom training packs, you want to try changing up the way you angle your car every time you try a shot. Try doing the same shot over and over but using the car in a different way, changing angles, sections of the car that you use to connect with the ball and trying to get the most power behind your hits. Over time you'll find yourself getting more comfortable using them in game and converting some of the tougher angles into goals. Now real quick I just want to say that the explanation for some of these uh, being a little shorter than the explanations of the lower rank mechanics in the other video is because at the lower levels it is much easier to explain things in doables like do this and try this. Whereas some of the higher level mechanics are better explained in concepts such as be ready for this and anticipating this. Please remember that all the training packs are linked in the description. Make sure to follow me on any socials as well as my Twitch where I stream pretty much every single day. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.